Miss Denise, and I'd like to introduce you to the Adinkra cloth symbols that we're going to do for our art class today. We'll be traveling to Ghana, Africa for our inspiration today. And again, once again, we will be measuring. We'll be using geometric shapes and measuring as part of our design. Uh, please remember to draw light because we want to erase easily after it's done. Anyway, let's begin. The Adinkra symbols from Ghana, Africa. I really like this one. Originally, the cloth was printed with symbols and all the symbols meant something to certain families, certain tribes, and printed on the cloth and made into garments. This was developed by the Ashanti people. Here's a person, maybe even a chief, dressed in a particular robe that has certain patterns on it. Through the years, the people of Ghana have also decorated the cloths to tell a story or express their thoughts or feelings. All these express thoughts and feelings. Here's a black and white design, a, a whole bunch of different designs. Notice the geometrics in it. Notice the re repetition of the patterns. Notice the rhythm and the movement. Do, do, do. That's a really important thing in art. Here are some symbols and their meanings that we could copy if we wanted to. Here's one that means faithfulness, one that means royalty, one that means forgiveness. Here's one that means welcome. For instance. So these symbols tell a story Also notice the symmetry in the shapes. Symmetry is when one side is exactly like the other side, like my hands are symmetrical. Both of them have five fingers. It's not symmetrical when I turn my hand this way though, because the thumbs are on the same side, but when I turn my hands this way, it's like a mirror, and that's what symmetry is all about. So notice how this side is like the other side. It's just like a mirror. They don't all have symmetry, but many have symmetry. These symbols tell a story, so you can look for a symbol that you like that tells your story, or you could make up your own symbol. We're going to work on heavy paper or cardboard, not cloth. Because these are virtual lessons, cloth is a little too hard to use, but I will show a cloth sample later. We're going to use circles and squares, compass, and all kinds of tools that will help us draw our symbol symmetrically. We need a pencil, a ruler, if a compass if you have it, something to use to draw circles. I have a template, but I also have ends of tape rolls that I keep in all different sizes so that I can make a circle easy. The, one of the best ways to make a circle any size you want is to have a compass. That's what this is. Geometry sets are awesome. If you get a geometry set, they often have rulers and these two really handy and fun tools and a compass in them. We'll also need a paper or cardboard, six by six inches approximately, for you to draw your symbol on, and a Sharpie.
So here are some patterns that we start with a circle before we, uh, to help we, here are some patterns that we use a circle to help us draw our symbols. Do you see how the circle helps us contain the star perfectly? We also divide our circles in half and then in quarters. So half this way and half that way, and we have four equal parts. That really helps. That's all part of measuring that artists learn how to do. Remember before I said artists know how to measure. They know how to use rulers. They know their geometric shapes. It's super fun. This is the one that I did earlier, and it was the moon and star. It means love, faith, and harmony. I really like what that means, and I love what it looks like, so I use that. But I like these two, spider's web, which means wisdom and creativity. This one means the chief, greatness and leadership. This one means child of the stars, guardianship. You can copy any of those you want, but wait, don't choose yet. I want to show you the squares. Here's some designs that we use a square to help us draw. We have a good luck symbol, a family symbol. That looks a little complicated, but it isn't. We have the all-seeing eye, and we have one that says abundance. Kind of looks like a flower. I'm going to show you how to start a circle symbol and how to start a square symbol, okay? So get out your tools and we'll begin. I have a six inch square on stiffer kind of paper. It's still bendy, but it's not too thin. And I have a board that I cut with a razor. So those are six by six, so I'll choose one to do my square on. For the circle, <clears throat> I use a compass and draw the circle the size I want. Or, because I have all these shapes, after all, I am an art teacher, I make sure to have this stuff. So, and you know, it's not very expensive, I think, People who like to do creative projects should all have this stuff. I just used this, drew my circle, and cut out the circle. I only cut half out, because I just wanted to show you about scissors, using scissors. So, when I use scissors, this hand, the left hand, is my guiding hand, okay? I don't move this hand very much, like I see some people cut like this. Oh, that's hard to turn the hand like that. I just keep my hand, my cutting hand, going that way. And this is the hand that turns. So just watch, okay? So I go far as I can go, not to the tip even. And then I go back to the back part of the scissors. And then I start cutting. See how I'm turning with this hand? Then I go back. Find out where I stopped and keep cutting. And then I turn some more. You notice how my scissor hand is not doing the turning. I just thought that might be helpful if you saw that. Because some people struggle with cutting. Okay, so I've got my circle. First thing we need to do is find the center. You can eyeball the center, which I'm doing now, and make a mark. I wonder how close I got to the center. Let's see. I'm going to measure this way, six inches. I'm right at three. I'm in the center that way. Now, let's measure it this way. Ah, uh, See, that's also because I'm an art teacher. I can see the centers of things pretty quickly. But I'll bet so can you after trying a few times.
This is how to begin a design that is contained in a circle. You get your circle ready, find the center, and then you divide it in half. Please draw light one way and divide it in half the other way. And now you have a circle that has four equal parts, right? You are ready to start drawing your design now. I've already done this one, so I think I'm going to do this one. I'm going to show you how to do that one. Now first, before you draw something, especially if you're copying it, you look at it. You see, okay, so it looks like it's got eight, uh, it's an eight-sided star, an eight-pronged star. Oh, I need a circle in the middle. That's going to be important. Okay, so I'm going to look for a circle in the middle. Ooh, I'll show you how to use a compass. So you set the point of the compass, which is very sharp, in the center. And then you make your pencil. The same kind of length as that. Right? You pull it down. And then I'm going to close it a little bit so it makes a smaller circle. Oh, it's not, that's too small. I'm just eyeballing, seeing how big the circle. And then you have to kind of do it in a steady motion. You can turn the paper or you can turn the compass. It's easier to do this for me. So now I've got my circle in the middle. And then, since there's eight stars, I'm going to worry only about four first. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go right to the edge of the inner circle and the point, the outer edge of this, the entire circle. I'm going to do that on all the four sides first. See, geometrics helps. Be this is so easy to draw this way since I divided the circle into four equal parts. It's a breeze now for me to draw this star and get everything where I want it. Measuring is so helpful uh, and fun. Well, fun for me anyway. Uh, I just uh, am getting rid of a couple lines. Okay, so now I've got the four, one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna put the other ones in and I'm gonna do them the same way. So I'm actually going to do this. At the very corners here, again I'm measuring, I make a mark up there and a mark down there and hope that's in between and it looks pretty good as halfway in between these two points. Let's do the same over here. That's not bad and I do the same thing I did with these. Oh, you know what? I divide this in half and in half again. Okay. And the same process. You see how that put it right in the center? Yeah. Easy peasy. I wonder how the first ruler was invented. You know, I never looked that up. 
I'll bet once it was invented, everybody had one or made one. Okay, now I have this design, don't I? I totally have that design. So we are going to make it in Sharpie, but before we do that, I want to show you how to put a design in the square. This is Child of the Stars and it's on hold. I'll get my square board out. I think I'll use a board. And I'll choose my square design. It's kind of the same way, in a way, it's kind of the same way that we did the circle. We're gonna find the, draw a square, find the center. However, it depends on the design you choose. If you have the square oriented like this, or oriented like this. If you were, for instance, going to do the all-seeing eye, you would probably orient your square this way. I think I'm going to do the abundance one. I really like that one. So to begin a square, we're going to divide it just like we divided the circle. So here goes. First of all, I already know my square is six inches by six inches. So in the middle would be three. I'm just going to try for fun and see if I can find the center without measuring. I'm going to say it's there. We'll see. Did I do that at three? Pretty good. Just a little over, a little more like that. Let's try this way now. Yep, there it is. Okay, good. So I divide it this way and this way. Making sure my lines are straight. Do you notice I am being very careful that it's not crooked like that. I line up, I know this is straight, this edge, and I know the ruler is straight. So I'm gonna line it up so that this is parallel here. Now that's a word that means that two parallel lines will never meet into infinity. They can go on forever and they will never ever meet. That's how you know you have a parallel line. If this was like that, you would see eventually those two lines would meet. So they are not parallel. Okay. I have my square divided. And I'm doing abundance. Again, there's a nice circle in the center and it looks like there's two circles. I will use the compass again to get some more compass practice. I'll make it a little smaller. you got to really make sure that that point doesn't move. Here goes. Whoa. There's my inner circle. I'm going to make my outer circle a little... I want a circle to have some uh, width, so I'm going to do a second. Okay, so I've got my circle, within my circle, and now I'm going to put these, they're almost flower petals, aren't they? So again, because I'm just a measurer, I'm going to make some lines like this, from corner to corner diagonally, that will help me make each petal symmetrical. So now I know uh, that I want to, I want to curve. Now I have to, I can't, I don't have something that I can use for uh, a geometric shape now. I have to draw this by eye. So here goes, so I kind of sketch it. I go right to this, from this center up to here. Now, can we do, can I do, can you do, it's symmetrically the same on the other side. Let's see. 
See how my pencil kind of has to find its way? That's why people sketch like that. It's okay if it has big lines. Now I'm going to make it thick, kind of like I made that. So here goes. I'm doing another one. And another one on this side. And then I am going to draw. I'll do that part later. I'll just do four of these. Okay, that was one. Now I can see if I turn it upside down, I can see that it could just come out a little bit like that there. And yes, I will just erase a little bit here. Mostly so I can see what I'm doing. There, that's better. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Here goes. I think I'll try turning it like this and going this way. I think that helps. Okay, now I'm putting the inside line in. These are just lines to help me see approximately where that goes. So here goes. I think you have the idea. I will keep working on this and finish it, and you can get started on yours. I definitely think it's your turn now. I'm measuring those little inside of the petals. I want to have them kind of even. They're an inch. I'm going to have them there like so. And they have kind of a little stamen on them, just like a real flower. So now I've just finished abundance. I have abundance and I have Child of the Stars all ready to do the Sharpie work. Let's do this one. Okay, I want my line straight, so I'm using a ruler. Here goes. Now, by the way, this center, I'm going to use this because I want to keep it really circular. I'm going to trace around that and make the center, well, I thought it was going to be perfect. I have to fix it a bit. There we go. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Now the thing about Sharpies, have you noticed that if you hold them too long on a piece of paper, they sometimes bleed or blot? So I don't just sit there with my Sharpie on the paper very often. I kind of find my spot and then I move quickly. 
because I don't really like ble the bleeding and the blotting. So I'm going over my pencil lines with Sharpie. It's just something that I like to do with a lot of my art lessons, but not all of them. Sometimes I don't outline with Sharpie. <coughs> But many times I do. Whoa! Almost done with eight of them. So I'm making a mess inside where I know that I'm, want, I'm just going to color in Sharpie. Now, another thing about Sharpies is when you first get them, they're really pointy. I like that point. So if you color them really, like press down really hard like that, you'll make this blunt. So when I color, I color on the side a little. I kind of hold it on the side, like a pencil in the number two position. Because that way, I won't take the point away for a while. I'll have the Sharpie longer in point formation. It's just, you know, learning how to use your art materials. So that's what I do. I color this in with Sharpie. And I will have my Child of the Stars design. I'm going to probably want to color around it after it's all done. And I could color in just one color. Or I could color in a lot of different colors. I could do whatever I wanted. It, you know, this is one of the things that I wanted to say to my students, is that you're the artist here. I'm giving you ideas, maybe inspiration, but what you do with it is completely up to you. You have to feel free to do art. It's one place you have absolutely total control. Take the control, own it. Art is powerful, and it's really good for us to make art because it centers us. There's that peaceful place inside when you're doing art. Quiet, present in the moment, very, very fun. Okay, you can see where this is going. I don't need to spend too much time going over and over that. But I, maybe I should have erased my pencil lines first. I forgot about that. Usually I tell people to erase their pencil lines. And I did forget. Because they're showing through the Sharpie just a little bit. They might have shown through anyway. Because um, the pencil was sharp and is indenting my paper a little. Let's see if this one shows through. No, see, that doesn't show through. I think that was better. Now, what I might do later when I'm done, like I'm not going to finish right now, is choose what color I want to use for the background. I know I love turquoise, so I knew I was going to jump for turquoise. Child of the Stars. I could have done a blue sky. I could have done a night blue sky. I could have done dark purple. Anyway, you can color the background and then you can hang it up. You can even write the title on the back so you don't forget. Do the same with this. Go around all your lines with Sharpie. Erase the pencil lines. Do your best to Make it symmetrical. You kind of have to, it's harder to sketch with the Sharpie than it was with the pencil. But that's okay. And then erase your pencil lines and then color it in. I'll show you again. Something that I wanted to show you.
this one. See how nice it looks? Even when it's just one color, I really like this design. And this design means the moon and star, love, faith, and harmony. I love that. So I've done those. And I wanted to show you one more thing. This is another way to do the lesson, okay? This is a cloth. So we did pieces of cloth, just light canvas that were approximately 10 inches by 10 inches. And we ironed a hem in the back because we want to hang it by a dowel and just glue it or sew it or whatever. And then you can hang, put a rope on there and hang it up. So we used, it looked like this when we first started. This is Child of the Stars again. This is it before we, we uh, dyed the cloth. So you can just use cotton muslin. You can iron a hem so that you can put a dowel in later. But you don't have to worry about it now. And then you can see where to put your circle. You start in pencil. You can see the pencil. It can be any cloth you want. It even could be colored cloth that you can see, light colors, so you can see the pencil. And then you use the marker on the cloth. And you have to be uh, careful. The cloth does uh, blot a little easier even than paper. But this lesson was also designed to be done on cloth. So those of you who have an opportunity to get your hands on some cloth and get some help ironing and stuff like that, you might want to do some kind of little flags like this and hang up. You know how we got the color? I'll tell you that and then we were done with the lesson. So once we do the Sharpie, we take acrylic paint and we water it down and we put it in a little bowl and then we just dip this in, squeeze it out, dip it in, squeeze it out, hang it up to dry. Acrylic paint never comes out of clothing or anything. So this will never wash out and it gives it a little color. So when you have the color, you can put up your flag. It can be an outside flag. It could be an inside flag. And you can write what it is on the bottom if you want. That's one thing I didn't tell you. If you wanted to and had room, I didn't leave room on here to write what this is, abundance. But when you have them as flags or you have a bigger piece of paper and do the symbol smaller, you can write the word. So that's the lesson for today. We went to Ghana, Africa, and I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Mm -hmm.